today we'll be talking about redefine your tendering process with 5D BIM. Real-time linking of BIM model into the quantities into BQ. So before we go in that, so I want to ensure that everyone's connection is stable. Let us watch a video, a short video together, all right? So the video is about Golden. Of course, me and my partners, our, our company, and also the software introduction to let you guys understand more about it. All right, so bear with me, okay? Okay. Over time, the AEC industry has gone through rapid changes and innovations to face ever-evolving new challenges. Digital transformation in the AEC industry necessitates the use of 3D visualization to handle more complex construction projects. The lack of digital solutions will lead to costly and time-consuming errors related to quantity takeoff, drawing interpretation and design coordination. These lead to poor project accuracy, low productivity and delays, which result in cost overruns and compromise in building quality. But all of this can easily be avoided. Introducing Glowden Cubicos 5D BIM Digital Cost Management Solution. It brings the power of advanced tools, 3D capabilities, cost management and other digital solutions to developers, contractors, subcontractors and consultants. Glowden Cubicos offers four types of BIM-based solution that will cover your construction project management lifecycle with TAS, TRB, TBQ and TME. You will be able to plan projects effortlessly and streamline processes during the tender, design and construction stage. Experience smooth collaboration and work efficiency among all project stakeholders over the entire project lifecycle. Furthermore, with the Glowden Cubicore series, users can now strengthen the collaboration by sharing BIM model data online across all project stakeholders. Cubicos TAS 5D BIM Quantity Takeoff for Architecture and Structure With TAS, users can experience fast and accurate quantification of 2D drawings and 3D models. Thanks to localized built-in measurement rules, deductions are processed automatically with visible and traceable calculation expressions in 3D, making examination tasks easier. Combining incredible 3D visualization and Cubicos Cloud Collaboration Platform, TAS helps you to achieve an impressive level of efficiency and gets your project off to a great start. Cubicos TRB 5D BIM Quantity Takeoff for Rebar With TRB's built-in calculation parameters, Users can get the most accurate data for rebar quantities and various rebar schedules at all times. In addition, TRB's 3D visualization presents you with reliable rebar quantities and that means you get the most precise and flexible quantity extraction, leaving nothing in the grey. Cubicos TME 5D beam quantity takeoff for mechanical and electrical Current industry practices pose a huge challenge for experts looking to generate accurate MEP quantity reports which could cause negative impact on project efficiency. But this issue doesn't have to be the norm. With TME, users can digitally calculate MEP quantities with comprehensive features. Equipped with incredible visualization tools, precise identification methods, and built-in standard calculation rules, TME is more than able to elevate your work experience and efficiency. Cubicos TBQ 5D BIM Digital Cost Estimation and Management Cost management can be a time-consuming affair, but this doesn't always have to be the case as TBQ offers a lean data management to your cost data. With TBQ, you will be able to streamline workflows and experience better collaboration between stakeholders, all of which is made possible by consolidating vital data such as rates, tenders, and various cost analysis within a unified platform. All your valuable cost data can be centralized, reused, and analyzed in TBQ to provide better insights, thus helping you evaluate and generate new tenders with just one click. Experience the flexibility to generate BQ report easily in various format and the capability to collaborate with other project stakeholders. By bringing together all stakeholders onto a single platform, 
blow them cubicos ensures smooth flow of information and streamline work process between team members. Glowden Cubicos Advanced Digital Solutions have tremendously helped AEC firms to accelerate their efforts towards the digital transformation to achieve maximum efficiency and accuracy. Glowden Cubicos 5D Beam Digital Cost Management Solution has been a cornerstone of the construction industry and provides complete support to users throughout the project life cycle. Organizations from around the world choose us as their partner to make their cost management and team collaborations smoother than ever. Simply by using Glowden Cubicost 5D Beam Digital Cost Management Solution. Glowden Cubicost, the number one trusted 5D Beam Digital Cost Estimation Solution in Asia. Connect with us today. So guys, are you still with me? Okay, all right. So this will be the table content for today. It will be separated into four parts. So the first part will be the 5D Beam Insights. And then after that, the second and the third part will be about the software. And the fourth part will be the last part, which is the summary and the Q&A section. So I hope you guys can stay until the end as in the end of this section, there is a surprise for everyone. Okay, it's for everyone that's today attend. So let's not waste much time. Let's go into it. So first of all, with the 5D Beam Insights. So before I go into it, may I ask any one of you know what is Beam? From this slide, as we can see this, the definition, Beam is a digital representation of the building process exchange and interpolability of information in digital format. Just as highlighted, so BIM, it represents a process exchange and also the interoperability in a digital form. So as we know, many countries has been using BIM, right? Of course, you can't say that 100% that everyone is using it, but BIM is there in each of every corner. So BIM is to digital transformation. As a wise man said in 2015, this man, McKinsey stated that in construction industry, which has the lowest digitalized sector, has only grown around average like 1% a year. But, however, there is a different saying. In what kind of saying is that in the mid of 20, 2020, still the same wise man, McKinsey, stated throughout a survey that believed that throughout the COVID-19 crisis, Eventually, it accelerated the adoption of 5D beam. Right, so at here, beam and 5D beam. To summarize it, eventually, beam has different type of dimensions. And all these dimensions are actually is isolated by themselves. And as we know, in every dimension, they are different. But today, we are just going to focus on 5D beam which is the cost and estimation. So how can we define 5D Beam? So 5D Beam is eventually is to allow a cost manager. Everyone can hear right, right now? That's all right. Okay, sure, good. Okay, my bad. Okay, I apologize for that. So eventually 5D Beam is to allow a cost manager, a quantity surveyor, even engineer to manage the quantity with cost. And of course, the most important thing part is that to control the overall project cost. So why 5D beam? So from this slide, there are so many words, right? So let me summarize it into a simple point. So the first point will be the to flexibility in terms of exchanging information like data and also the cost data. Then to improve and better collaboration and coordination within the team. Then also to have the right access with the right data with the right people. Then when it comes to the embedded measurement rule and also the smart re reporting. So I believe that just now like throughout the video, we know that Golden is our company and Cubicost 
is our product. So a few things great about Cubic Course is that one of it, that the Cubic Course eventually embedded with different kind of region measurement rule. And another thing will be the Spark reporting, which these two I will show you later on in the software sharing. Voila. So may, I know you guys yes, are okay, is that these four software. So the first one, the green color will be the, the quantity takeoff for architecture and structure. The blue one will be the takeoff for rebar. The orange will be the cost estimation and management, which we call it as views of quantity, BQ. And also the purple one will be the mechanical and electrical. And great thing is about that these four software eventually can interlink with each other which is very convenient and make great efficiency. So as we know in construction, we've got different kinds of stage. So like design, tender, construction, and operation. And not to fail you guys, not to disappoint you guys, eventually our software, which is the cubic cost, will be placed in every phase. So from the design phase until the close out phase, all will be using it. So you don't have to worry that whether which one will be missed out. Then I will be putting in an example of the position of the cubic cost. I'll be using the mobile phone as the example to compare. So as we know from the most old mobile phone, only can make calls. Just like the traditional method, we will be using the measurement rule ruler. Then after that calculator, and one by one measure it out, then wrote it down in the paper. Then after that, when comes the next one, the old mobile phone, you can start with text. And of course, you can use to call, perhaps play some mini games. So it's just like a 2D software. So eventually 2D software, actually it makes us a bit of convenient, which we still can measure, but however, we still need to manually to wrote it down or maybe to key in, in the Excel. And the last one is where we Cubicos will be placed in, the latest smartphone. So as we know, latest smartphone, we can use for many functions like social media, camera, play some music, video, and even a high-end game that you can play with. Just like the Beam software from 2D model to 3D model then comes with quantity, then also with cost management so as we know of the ways of doing quantity takeoff we can see that the traditional method is only got step one to step five so many steps and sometimes when we make mistakes we need to go back to step one then after that when it comes to 2d oh it's slowly to reduce lesser one steps from step one to step four then when it comes to 5d you can see it's just only using three steps and it's very easy convenient easy to understand, easy to use. Then, like, like as today, I'm going to show you guys is that, see, from here, this slide, these are the four cubic cost software. And we and eventually we can use the two drawings like AutoCAD, CAD file, scan PDF, and even the image pictures to import into our cubic cost. And one of the good thing, the great thing is that even the IFC, even the Revit file also can import into our software, our cubic cost. So today, we will be focus, focusing on these two software, which is the green one and the orange one. Architecture and structure and also the quantity cost. So before we go into the software, let me share more a bit, which is the tendering process. So tendering process, we are focused on quantity takeoff. We are focused on preparation of views of quantity. As we know, tendering process is the most intense and is the most important stage. As we know, this is to help our company to get the project, to successful, to grow the company and also to yourself. So as we can see here, there are so many steps, one to seven, and even sometimes we got like that revision, sometimes addendum, sometimes a second negotiation. So it takes up 
more steps. But using the software, the QB course, you can see just only four steps, quantity take off, preparation of BQ, and even until the evaluation of tender. So here comes the empower of the 5D beam. Eventually, it, it makes a lot of improvement. The efficiency speed up four times and also can auto-generate the report. Easy linking to the BQ2 and of course the data. Then also we got a standardized platform and also an auto-generate analysis. And one most important thing is that no paper required. Eco-friendly guys, all right. So right now we are going into the software, which I will share to you about the software. So before I want to share with you this into the software, is everyone okay with the pace? Everyone still with me? Maybe you guys can put in in the chat box that everyone's still okay, good. Right, okay. So I'll be continue, okay? Okay, good, good, good. Thank you for the feedback, really, truly. All right, appreciate. So just now, like I say, that our cubic cost actually has embedded with different kinds of measurement rules. So it's like here, you can see the calculation rules. Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, UK, Indonesia, India, Vietnam, Taiwan, UAE, Philippines, Sweden, Thailand, US, New Zealand, Australia. So according to our own region, we will be using our, our own calculation rules. Just like me and my partner, we are actually from Malaysia. So we'll be, since we're in Malaysia, we'll be using the Malaysia calculation rules. And right now we are going into the software is that I'm going to use this small project as a quick testimony. All right. Okay. So right now, can you guys see my screen? It's in the software, right? Yes. Right. Good. Nice. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to continue. First of all, I'm going to create a new project. Okay. So I just name it as project three. And just like the measurement rule, just now I mentioned, there's a lot of different type of measurement rules. So right now I'll be using this one, the UK standard. So I just click okay. So it will let you analyze the data, the project. Okay, so right now we go into the software. Then first of all, I'm gonna show you is here. This one, the measurement setting and the measurement rules. So throughout this sharing, I will be share to you like how our cubic cost from the foundation to the ground floor and also some of the good functions, the great functions. So first thing will be the measurement settings. So for the measurement settings actually is based on your calculation rules. So how you know that you are using the correct measurement rules is that you can see here from the project information, right? So you can see that we have been using this one and you can see the blue color one. So I'm gonna put some of the data into it. So 83.2, later I will show you why I put 83.2. So here, the floor setting. So the floor setting actually here, you can see that we can put in the zone, zone one, zone two. Actually, it's just like, if let's say your project got a lot of different towers, so we can just put tower A, Tower B, Tower C. So right now it's just a bungalow. So I'm gonna just use zone one. So here I just put like maybe height four. First floor also height four. Here I'm gonna put a 3.4. All these digits I will show you later on on why I put this. So here actually the bottom here, one of the functions is that actually they are already default in it. So like let's say your foundation, you are you you'll be using all overall like grade 20. So the foundation will be using the grade 20. If let's say you say you want to use the grade 30, so it, you can actually change it here. It's up to you guys. So right now, actually we'll be using the default setting. So I'm just going to put grade 20. Then here, the beam model. So we actually can import the IFC file and also the Revit file. Good, right? But today we're going to, I'm going to share with you with just using the AutoCAD file. So. Right now, I go into it, okay? 
So I'm going to add in like the drawing. So as just now as you can see that why I put 83.2 and 83.4 and also the height for meter, as you can see from the elevation view, here, the 83.2, 83.4. Then after that here, the four meter height. Here also say the four meter half height. So actually, so after that, you just separate the drawing. Then I'm going to show you how to do on the axis. So I know that there's some question in it. I will, after the, during the, maybe there's a break time, I will slowly to like explain to you guys on how we can change, okay? So first, right now, we're going to use this impressive function, auto identify. So first, I'm going to pick the axis. Then after that, the label. And we're going to put auto identify. There you go. So right now, I'm going to do the foundation, okay? So I'm just going to select the foundation floor. So I'm going to input. So foundation, we are talking about bow caps and excavation. Same thing. Right now, I'm going to just separate it. Then put it in. So isolate it. Then now, right now, I'm going to relocate it together along with the axis. So here it is. So right now, as I said, bow cap. So from here, the elemental list, actually it's just according into it. So we're gonna to go to the foundation, bow cap, same thing. I'm gonna use identify as time consuming. So I'm gonna do it quick. So I'm just gonna pick the label, auto identify, and there you go. It's all inside. Then after that, I'm gonna do the blinding. So, Blind, for blinding, eventually we don't need to have to like one by one just select it. We can actually use here this function and just select our cap, right? So just highlight it. Okay, put it maybe put around like 10 the extension. Okay, so I'm going to show you in 3D view. So now you got a power cap. Then after that, I'm going to show you is the excavation. Uh, auto generate and uh, let's say our depth will be three meter so i'm just gonna put it so here you go you got your excavation then right now after excavation our cap then i'm gonna do is the column so for the column same thing i'm just going to, just going to use the identify auto identify function so i'm gonna select then like all this actually i don't need it so I just deselect, unselect it. Okay. So I just gonna unselect, untick all that I don't need it. So after that, pick the label tool and just auto identify. And then I'm gonna show you in the three D view, and there you go. That's your foundation. Fast right. Okay, so right now we're going to go into ground floor. Since foundation we done, we're going to go into ground floor. So right now I'm going to copy the column from the, from the foundation to the ground floor. So at here is another function, good function. So I just going to use, I just need column. So I just going to put okay. And there you go, your column in ground floor. So right now I'm gonna input the structure drawing. So from here, same thing. I'm gonna separate it. Okay. Then after that, I'll again relocate it. So as you can see, it's very fast. So it's done. Then after that, I'll be doing the wall, the concrete wall. Okay, so same thing, I'm going to use identify, the auto identify functions, as it will be faster. So I'm just going to select it, then pick the wall label, then just auto identify, and there you go. You got your wall. So from this, okay, so from here, eventually we can know that 
this is the swimming pool wall, right? So from here, the swimming pool wall, we actually can just like maybe, like just maybe rename it. Okay, so we're going to rename it like swimming pool. Okay, then after that, I'm going to put it as this one. Okay, same thing to swimming pool. So from the swimming pool, right now, as we can see, if I highlight all, okay, so actually is this will be the swimming pool wall. So from the swimming pool wall, so the swimming pool wall eventually will be at the bottom, right? So right now at here, I just like maybe going down like two meters. So I minus two. Then from here, I just start from the bottom and in 3D view, there you go, it's at the bottom. So after done the swimming pool wall, I'm going to do the beam. Same thing for the beam. I'm going to just like using the auto identifier. So I just click on the beam, then click on the label. And there we go, we got our beam. So you can see. So I want to show you something, something that's different, right? So as you can see, the beam right now is just like a normal beam, straight beam. So right now, if let's say I want to do an arc. So I just going to click. So if let's say I'm going to put like 1000, for example, and there you go. You got, got an arc beam. So, but of course, right now I'm, I'm using the bungalow. So it's a straight beam. So I'm going to revert it back to straight. Same goes to the column. You know. So for the column, let's say column. All right. So for the column, right, we, I can actually do the sloping too. You can also, like, let's say here, I'm just going to put like 60 degree. There you go. It's slanted. So as I know, for some of the building design, actually we got like slanted or maybe arc beam, like maybe slanted column. We actually can do that. But for this uh, bungalow project, so I'm going to revert it back to straight again. Okay. So once done, the beam done, right now I'm going to do the slab. So for the slab, same thing. Identified functions. So I'm just going to put, pick the label. So just identify, click OK, and there you go. You can see. So your structure building, your slab, your beam, your column, your wall, concrete wall is done. Okay. So as you can see from the from the swimming pool, right? Actually, it's at the top. So we can also change it. Like, okay, I'm going to click here. Same thing. I'm going to change it like swimming pool. So from this swimming pool, same thing. I'm going to go down like maybe two meters. I just minus two. And there you go. Voila, at the bottom. Okay, so once done, right now, I'm going to show you the next one will be staircase. Right, so staircase, as you can see, there's no information about it. So back to the architecture. You can see here, the riser, the track, and even the length at here. So just back to my structure drawing. Then I'm going to create staircase. So at here, attribute editor actually is to show you on how you can amend your information of your like your beam, like your column, and even staircase and so on. As for this one will be the particular one. So I'm going to put it, the information just now we saw, right? Then after that, I just like put it in all. And here, okay. After that, I'm going to do some edit at here. All right. So after that, once you're done, you can see. 
your staircase. Nice and clean. So as you can see, by using the TS, we are very fast to do out by using the auto identification. We actually can very fast to do our beam, our slab, our walls, even staircase. So right now I'm going to go into the architecture. So for the architect architecture, same thing. I'm going to use like maybe right now I'm going to do wall. So I'm going to choose mensary wall, which is our brick wall. So I'm just going to select our brick wall. Then maybe I the door and window sideline too. So I'm just going to click and same thing, auto identify. So I just have to click and there you go. All the walls. And you might thinking, where's the opening, right? So don't worry. Right now we go into it. So for the opening, we're going to go like, maybe like, let's say we're going to click door. And after that, go back here. As you can see here is the window and door schedule. So I'm just going to put this identified, highlight it. Okay. So here, here will be the information of the door and window. So right now I'm going to remove those that the rows and columns that I don't need it. So I'm just going to click identify. So done. Then I'm going to go back to the ground, the ground floor there. Then from here, I'm going to just click, as just now I already done the side line. So now I'm going to click the label. So once I'm going to put auto identification, and there you go, put it in 3D view, all your opening is there. So after your opening, you might thinking, oh, what about the lintel? Right, so now we're going to do the lintel. Same thing. We don't need to like one by one click in the lintel. We actually can also use the same thing here and just highlight it all. And here you go. Right now, I'm going to put in 3D view. Here's your lintel. So everyone's still good? Okay. Okay, let me continue a little bit more, right? Almost halfway there. Okay, bear with me. So after done this door and window, walls. Now we're gonna do the finishes. So for the finishes, first of all, I'm gonna draw a separation line first. That's why as I want to do the external, the external finishes. So I'm gonna just like draw. So as from here, as you can see, there's like a yellow line, right? A yellow box actually. So after that. From here. So I'm just going to click in like the finish schedule. I'm going to import the Excel file. There's one thing of our good thing of our TAS, we can eventually import Excel file too. So from here, you're just going to click it. Okay. Just going to put in, fill in all the information like waterproofing. Actually, it's very convenient compared to last time, like traditional, we need to like slowly one by one, one, one wall, one floor, something like that. Then after that, we're just going to click all. Same thing, I'm going to remove this that doesn't need it. The rows and column that I don't need. And I just click identify. Click OK. So as you can see, there's different name, right? Never mind. Let's say I'm going to change it to external. Then I'm going to just click it in. Right? As you can see, the purple color. Don't worry. Later, I'll show you in the 3D view. So let's say I'm going to do some of the room. Okay, I'm not going to do all. I'm going to do some of the room only as the time consuming. So let's say I'm going to put like back kitchen. Okay, then after that, utility. Then after that, mid room. Right, done. So one of the best thing of the function. So right now we're going to put it in 3D view. As you can see, the outside is blue color, which is our external. Inside is also blue color, but it's different as Actually, we can change the color to our own likes. So after once we've done all this to the fit, to the finishes, so I'm going to go into the quantity. So from here, I can just click calculate. 
I'm going to click all. So after once done, done, okay, we can just like view the quantities. Okay. So from the viewing the quantity, as we can see here, column, wall, all your volume, your form work, it's there. And we can also reverse check model. And let's say, perhaps like maybe here, just like, and let's say here, Yes, we can just see the volume where it is. So after that, we can also view the expression, this one. Right, so from here, let's say I'm going to choose like maybe wall, I'm going to choose this wall. So one of the functions. So from here, the expression, eventually we can see on how we do the calculation, the formula, and also from the 3D deduction, we can actually know that. So this actually the wall, got deduct anything like original quantity, the deduct door, column, and even the linter. So once it's done, okay, and also I can show you like here the report here. So from here, actually we can also can see that the column one, column two, door, window, and this one will be the worksheet. <coughs> the worksheet will be the formula on how the calculation done and here will be the wall as you can see the volume height and how it does okay so after that i'm going to show you something uh, which we call it as cubic cloud cubic cost cloud okay so i'm going to show to you right the cubic cloud okay right you guys can see my screen right so this will be the cubic cost cloud. So, okay. Right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, like play this video for you guys to see how the cubic, co uh, cubic cost cloud do. So as you guys can see here, this will be the zone. Like we can select roof first ground. So after that, we can show that like, uh, like how is it like the foundation, the finishes, all that, the model. We can just view the model as you want, as you like. So you can just like rotate it and so on. And we can also see the section. So from the section, we can see it clearly. Then after that, we can also see like the attribute, like just how I said that your information. So, then after that, your calculation, your construction method, all that will be in there. Then after that, we can view the quantity and expression. As we can see from here, the calculation rules, all that. Then after that, we can see the report. We can view the report too. Like just like how in the TAS, like how we see the report, like from beam, like just now wall, all that. Then after that, I'm going to show you is this one, which is a comments, like how the cubic cost cloud can make comments on the model. So first of all, we're going to do it is that, let's say I'm going to use this uh, wall as an example. So there will be a toolbar. That's so I can use the toolbar just like uh, to measure the length and so on. Then after that, eventually I can cloud it out so as we know, we always have to cloud in drawings, right? So we can just mark up, like cloud it. Then after that, I can put in comment like, please check here, like please check. Then after that, once it's done, okay. So we can also do in section view. Then let's say I'm going to put it in the section view. An example for the window, same thing. I can just cloud it. And I also like, We'll just put a comment like just please check okay so from the side the right side eventually we can see like oh there's comment in it so we can just like quick review like just click it okay like once we click it it will jump to here it will auto locate for us like where's the comment so 
here we can see it very clearly and even there's time so after that once it's done the cloud as the cloud for the cloud functions for the cloud function eventually if let's say like your team or maybe your client they don't have the a TAS mod TAS software eventually they can use the website to do it so right now I'm going to show you the quantities okay I like how to link into the BQ so back to the software here the BQ so we actually can import the Excel file too and let's say maybe perhaps I put a sample right so from here I just identify the column identify the row then identify all then just click OK and there you go your BQ is in the TES and also we can also use the link so from the link we can actually link our quantities our TES quantities into our TBQ so for this one will be the next part which is my partner will be sharing about so right now I'm going to pass it to my to my partner Hong Wei can you take it over so I'm going to stop sharing you can share your screen so just to introduce myself again, my name is Hongwei. So I'll be taking over this part. Now, okay, um, is everyone still okay? Like, is everyone tired? You know, is everyone like getting sleepy? Oh, it's good, right? Okay, okay, that's good, that's good. Because we are thinking about giving guys a break, you know, five minutes, but I think, but I think we're just gonna proceed, okay? So thank you, Hong Sing, for that amazing presentation on TS. So just stick with me because we are already halfway completed. So we're going to be talking about the 5D beam costing platform. So after exploring the functions and potential of TAS, which is the taking off for architecture and structure words, which Hong Seng has presented earlier, you know, including the cloud surveys, the auto identify, the slanted column, arc beam, and etc. So I believe you are now much aware about the benefits of our Cubicost 5D beam software. So when in a construction in a tendering phase after you complete your quantity taking off what you have to do you have to do costing so from here i'll be doing the uh, bq part of things so introducing introducing to you the tbqc also known as our tender series bills of quantities so after you have done your quantities taking off tbqc is the platform where you insert your quantities the pricing, the description, basically the whole process of preparing a BQ will be done here. So remember the model as well as the quantities that were generated uh, by Hong Seng just now. And remember the linked TBQ project that Hong Seng mentions now. So this is something that I'll show it to you later. But for now, allow me to talk a bit more about TBQC first, okay? Since this is a 5D beam software, the whole concept or the direction of TBQC revolves around these three keywords, which are digital, collaborative as well as data build up where we believe the electronic tendering and digital costing will be the new norm in the future. So just to give you an idea of how TBQC uh, serve for you, whether you are from consultant QS or contractor, actually I want to ask for uh, just to have an idea, uh, how many of you are actually from consultant background and how many of you from contractor background, maybe just type in the chat box and just let me know. Consultant, okay. I can see consultants, contractor, okay. Or oh, there's a handful of consultant actually. Contractor. Okay, but either way, this will benefit for both consultant and contractor. So don't worry. So in TBQC, there's a lot of function to or even developers as well. Yeah, it, it also benefits the developer as well. So no worries on that. So let me continue. In TBQC, there's a lot of function that can offer, for example, these following functions. So we have the flexible reporting where you can import the different file format, such as Excel or PDF into the TBQ software, where the pitch margin, the format, all will be set automatically, where you just need to make a minor adjustment in terms of the paging and et cetera. We also have the PDF conversion and printing. So I believe most contractors over here, maybe you receive a lot of PDF, PDF BQ. So you can actually uh, identify this BQ into the software. And aside from that, I believe it's common you know, to have addendum for most of the projects when you have constantly changes. So therefore in TPQC also have this seamless addendum management that can help you uh, manage better. All right. So aside from that, since preparing BQ requires a lot of 
information such as the description, the rates, and, and, and such. So TBQC has this centralized data that stores all of that. For example, your build-up rate, your schedule rate, description, as well as the BQ templates. So this is beneficial for you since you can actually reuse this to your future project. And aside from that, it's a 5D beam software. So we always aims for better team collaboration as well as the cost management side of things. So all of this will be shown later. So based on what I've briefly shown you just now, I would like to show it detail in details in terms of the actual function, but just to make it more interesting, all right? Together, we're gonna imagine that we'll be doing the BQ together. I will also be showing the steps from the description, the quantities to the rates, as well as to the uh, tender evaluation side of things. And not only that, I will also be comparing it between the traditional method as well as the TBQC method. So that way you can really understand the beneficial edge that TBQC can provide. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So first thing first, we need to lay down the backbone, okay? Of the BQ, which is the description actually. So usually when preparing a BQ in the traditional method, most of us will probably do in Excel. I believe for that, I believe most of us are doing Excel or even some other BQ software. I mean, there are definitely no issue with uh, doing in Excel. However, the issues with that, we, you have to look for historical projects to identify the description, the rates or other information that is relevant. And most of the time, these historical projects may, may not always be in an Excel format. What if it's in PDF format? So if it's a PDF, you have to extract manually and type back into your BQ. So the whole process of finding, combining is very time consuming or more importantly, it will be more likely to make a mistake because you are extracting from one place to another place and you have to constantly you know, be focused in it. So how would TBQC comes into play? So TBQC is able to quickly reuse previous projects data from various sources to compile the BQ. You know, it also has an intelligent checking to ensure the accuracy of the compiled BQ. So to put into perspective, so this is my TBQC interface. You can see over here that is, we are able to import different file formats such as the Excel, the PDF, or even the project data within TBQC. And most importantly, we can also import the PDF, uh, the scan PDF file. So just to give you an idea, so if your Excel file, if you click on get data from Excel, it will be imported into the software. Similarly, as well as PDF, this is the uh, normal PDF. If you have TBQC, which actually some of our clients over here, I, I believe there are some clients over here, there's TBQC project as well. So they can also do that as well. So just now I mentioned on the import scan PDF. So if you look at this short demonstration, I can import my scan PDF file over here. I'll just click, uh, I'll just select the uh, files that I need to use. In this case, it will be this PDF BQ. And over here, you can see all the pages will be generated towards my left side. And we can actually manually select which page do we want. So for example, I'll just identify P3, this one and P4. So after confirming my selection, I'll click on identify and the software will do its own identification. And just like that, you can see all the description is laid down. And you will also highlight to you the description that is identified towards the PDF file on your right. It'll be highlighted in orange. So that way you save a lot of time in terms of typing this description manually. You need to do the paging adjustment only. So remember the BQ checking function that I, that I mentioned just now. So in TBQC, we can just check BQ function. So depending on what you want to check, description unit. So let's say my unit, I want to check my unit. It will highlight to you which uh, item is actually missing, which needs you to amend immediately. Same goes to my quantity as well. You know, you don't want to be publishing or send your tenant documents uh, to contractor and there's no quantities to it. You know, it's going to stir a lot of uh, misunderstanding. Okay. So we have this function to do it. And not only that, actually, before you want to publish or print a BQ, the software will also check again, just to double confirm on your works. So similarly, if there's any unique quantity that is empty, the software will let you know as well. Okay. So that is for the description side of things. So by now, 
let's assume lah, okay, that we have really laid down all our description for the project. So now it's time to input our quantities. So um, traditionally, or maybe some of you are using like uh, Excel, because actually based on the questions that are asked in the Zoom registration, there are some of you are still using the traditional method. So with that, you may need to manually extract the quantities from the Excel worksheet and key into the Excel BQ files. So when you're doing this, the tendency of making error is high because also the same thing, you are extracting the information one by one. And not only that, if there are any changes to the quantities, you will find it very hard, or in fact, your manager will find it very hard to trace back the quantities since there's no formula or any linking to the quantities, right? So what solution TBQC can provide to enhance or perhaps resolve part of the process? This is where the models and quantities generated in TS can come into play. As what Hong Sing has mentioned, our software is able to interoperate within each other since it's a 5D beam software. So in TBQC, there's a dynamic link between our taking off software, which in this case will be our TAS. So the model that is generated earlier, we can actually directly link it into TBQ, which you can trace back into quantities easily. But this is not limited to TS only. We have the other software, which is called TRB, which is mainly for our reinforcement bar taking off. So that one, you can also link it into TBQ. And aside from that, there are also other methods to uh, link the quantities into your BQ and TBQC. So allow me to show it to you. So inside TBQC, you can see this, my quantity. You can see there are four different sets for manual, TAS, TRB, and Excel. So if let's say in manual quantity, so it, it's really equipped with the necessary description. For example, your time, your count, length, width, height factor, all of the description that is necessary for you to do your taking off. So you can actually do your taking off over here. And the software will automatically calculate everything and the quantity can then link into your description, which is very convenient and it's easier for you to check, okay? As mentioned earlier, even TS is, is able to do it. So in the quantity generated in TS just now, in the view quantity by category, if, uh, if all of you remember, we can link it into BQ. And the quantity details will also be shown in the TBQC side of things, which you can see what is the uh, project that is linked. So allow me to show you a short demonstration on this. So this is my TS interface. I click on a link TBQ project and log into my TBQC. So this is my list of projects. I'll just select this one as an example. So after I click into it, you can see my BQs will be generated out just like that. So if I click on view quantity by category, you can see that the quantity that was calculated just now, we can actually link it to TBQ. So for example, this is my wall. So I'll just go to my wall and I'll just drag this quantity. And just like that, the quantities is already linked into the BQ side of things. Not only can drag, we can actually double click as well. You know, for example, if this one, I'll just double click these quantities. Well, this one as well, just an ex example. So let's say we are done. We are done already. Okay. So we're just going to switch to our TBQC project where we got to so I'm just checking just to make sure that no one is using the file. So if you go to back to our TBQC file, you can see that the quantities is already linked together with a small remark that states TAS in green color. So that way, when other people want to check, they can know immediately where does the quantities derive from, just like that. So aside from the manual or TAS, you can actually link your Excel quantities as well. You just need to import your Excel spreadsheets or worksheets into the TBQC. Then you just link the quantities in. It will show the quantity details to you on what is the Excel files, when is it done, and what is the quantities. So you can also trace back much easier as compared to extracting the information manually without any linking. So that way it's much convenient, it's much faster, and it's much easier. All right. And with the intuitive display of quantity detail, like I showed you with the TAS just now, from a manager POV, you can check back easily. You know, if let's say, if it's Excel quantity, you can directly go back to that. So the quantity expression will also show the project models and the quantities and the date. And it's done by who? Together with the users. Same goes to our, if it's in a TAS, it will also show you what is the actual item. For, for in this case, it will be the column. All right. Okay, 
So I'm not sure if I'm speaking too fast or is it this pace is all right. You know, we have already done the description and the uh, quantity side of things. So before I move on to the cost or price of things, you know, I just want to double check again. You know, is everyone up to now? Are you impressed or are you okay with it? Or if any, any questions that you want to raise, you know, just feel free to leave in a chat box. Okay. Okay. I'm hearing one name, one, one, uh, Kishore, Kishore saying, okay. Okay. So it's, if everyone is okay, I will just, I'll move on to the next part, which is the cost management. So we already done our quantities and description. So now it's rates. So I understand, you know, from the contractor side of things, when it comes to pricing tender, you know, when you're preparing for tender submission, you need to manually extract extract the rate from your master cost data files. Same goes to consultant. When you have to prepare the pre-tender estimate, you also need to you also need rates to actually do that. Now, for those experienced one, which I believe some of you here are probably like, you know, with a lot of years of experience, when you see the item, you immediately know what is the price or what is the rate. But for your juniors or for those that is less experienced, they will have to refer back to the files. So similarly, it's time consuming. Not only that, a lot of time from an enterprise level, you will find it hard to analyze the total resources and costs involved, right? And lastly, if you have the same BQ items across different uh, bills, it will be hard for you to trace back and see what is the specific rate is applied to. Okay, so in TBQC, the solution that they are able to provide is that number one, it is able to automatically accumulate and analyze the cost data. Not only that, there's also a built-in formula to reduce the calculation error. So this part is specifically for the build-up unary part. I will show it to you later. And lastly, in TVQC, there's a resource library which you can quickly reuse these projects or rate uh, to your future projects. And to put it into perspective, you know, as I mentioned on the resource library as well as the build-up unit rates, so both can be actually considered in different category, but it's also relevant to each other. So for resource library, it's like your enterprise master rate library. As for build up unit rates, it's more towards for your project. So this is just not limited to contractor only. Even consultant may also find this useful. Like when you're preparing pre-tenant estimate, you also need some rates to refer back. And if you pay attention to the diagram itself, it is shaped in an infinity symbol it means that the build-up unit rates can be stored into resource library where eventually it can also be used back in your future project. So it's like relevant to each other. And with resource library, not only it helps you as an enterprise to create and maintain a standardized uh, build-up unit rate, it also consolidates the cost data in a centralized database, which is kept in your company server. <coughs> Sorry. So you can just refer back, not only just for your tendering process, even for consultants, when it comes to evaluating your VO, where you need to refer back to your rates, you can also do that. So making the whole process of finding it a lot more uh, easier. <clears throat> As for the build-up unit rate, this is more like the breakdown of each all-in rate. So TBQC, they will have this build-up unit rate tab for you to do your build-up. So all the worksheets are predefined with the necessary formula. So I'll just show you right now. So inside, I click on build-up unit, uh, build unit rate tab. You can see over here, we have different categories. So we can just create our own price library. So just create a subcategory over here, whether is it for your uh, unit rate, your composite material, your raw materials, composite labels. You can just do that, anything that's relevant to you. So once you have done, you just click on the heading, subheading items and sub items. So in here, you can just select the trade code depending on your words, the description. I'm just going to put example and the unit. So once that is done, you can then just key in all of the remaining uh, important information. So if a company already has a cost data files, you can also import it. So by clicking import and export and click identify uh, Excel, I'm just going to select my file over here. And this is my label. So I'm just going to identify each of these columns to its relevant information. And I'll just do the same to the materials and plants and machinery. And just like that, once you are done, you can see that all the files is transferred into the software. 
So now we can go back to the BQ things. Just click back to BQ. And then over here in the rate code, we can select what is the rate that we would like to use. So in this case, I'll just use this uh, six ringgit. So the net rate will appear and the amount will also be automatically uh, calculated out. So if let's say we have similar items that require this similar rate, there's also a way to do it. So for example, in this view, uh, in this view over here, I want to filter all of the works that is relevant to walls. So I'll just click on filter and types on wall. And I'll just click OK. So this is all the works that is relevant to my walls only. So now I'll just go back to my rate code. I can actually drag and copy everything across the items. And just like that, all of my items that's related to walls will apply the same rate. So that way you won't face any discrepancy issue at all. It will be consistent all the way. I mean, you don't want to have the same items with different rates. This is gonna, you know, cause a lot of misunderstanding and may even face, you know, actually major mistakes when it comes to justifying it. And not only, if let's say you have used that particular rate code, if you go back to the build up unit rate, you'll be able to see which rate is used in the BQ and will indicate it to you just with the BQ uh, icon towards the reference there. And furthermore, inside the resource library function, you can also have this compare and build up unit rate uh, the, between your current project as well as a resource library. So if let's say one of your rates is uh, higher than the one in your resource library, the software will actually highlight to you and the information will be noticeable to all your team members across the project. So that way you can go to the highlighted rate and identify why is there an increase or decrease to the rate, you know, just to make necessary uh, justification to your management, to your client or even consultants. Okay. And lastly, with the resource library, there's also reference record and pricing analysis function where user can identify the trends of the rate, which includes the creator, the data, as well as the time created. So for example, over here, we can see the former price trend from this past uh, four project at different timeline. There will also be a bar chart for better viewing experience. So from an enterprise level or management level, where you wish to do some analysis, this will be much easier for you to do it. Okay. So we have done pretty much everything as far as for the BQ part is concerned, the description, the quantities, the rate. So we'll be moving on to the next one, which is tenant evaluation. So this is more uh, related to consultants, actually. Contractor were more just doing tender submissions only. Okay. So from a consultant point of view, I believe that, you know, doing tender evaluation is a nightmare, you know, especially when you're dealing with big skill project, as well as huge numbers of tenderers. And I'm talking about 10 to 15, or even upwards up to 20 tenderers, you know, which I used to face last time as a consultant QS as well. So back then, all of the tender submissions are done in hard copy. In fact, now still use it, certain companies. So consultant sites have to manually analyze the each of these submissions and do the necessary evaluation. So it's very time consuming, to be honest. You know, I, was, I, I tried before, you know, staying out late just to key in this information and do the necessary, <coughs> necessary analysis because usually the tenant evaluation has to be done within a week. So the traditional method revolves around spreadsheets. You know, you have to do it manually. So this approach is very likely to make mistakes and the check-in process is extremely hard as well because there's too much information to check. So that's why TBQC comes into play. TBQC offers the e-tender function without paper, everything online. So consultant, you can import multiple submission with just one click. Not only that, the software will also do the prices comparison and gives you various graphics and Excel reports for reporting. Okay, I will show in the later slides a bit. And just to give you an idea how this works, allow me to illustrate from this flow diagram. So as mentioned, sorry, TBQC is a costing platform. So once the quantity is taking off pricing of the BQ is done, TBQC is able to generate electronic tender and send it to the tenderers. So the tenderers can actually uh, price in. And if you have TBQC software from a contractor point of view, remember the function, the resource library. So this way it can comes into play and help you do that pricing and then uh, 
it will be much easier for you to do your pricing if you have that software. But if you don't have software, you can also do it online with a website, which I'll show later on as well. So after you have done the pricing, you can just submit back to the consultant. And the consultant will then let the software do the evaluation and give the data back. So this reduced majority part of the tender evaluation works from for the consultant. So to show you, so a consultant will first generate the complete BQ as standard document. You know, we have to create the password because it's PNC when it comes to that. So I'll click on OK. It will save as a TBQ file. And this file, you can actually send it via email to your tenderers or even burn it into a disk so that your tenderer can come and collect. So after your tenderer has come and collect the files, they can actually go to this website to do the pricing. This is for a contractor that doesn't have the, the TBQ software. So just sign up an account and just log in to the website. And after login, just click on project quoted. You can just import the tender document. And just like that, all of the information will be shown up and you just do your pricing. And once you are done with your pricing and everything, just generate tender submission. And then just rename your information, your company, and also create a password because when it comes to rate, it's actually private and confidential. So a consultant can then import the files that the tenant has sent by clicking import tenant submission, by clicking over here. So once you click it, you can just select the files. And when you have to select the files, you have to remember the password as well. So you have to ask me your tenderers. And just like that, the software will actually do a side-by-side -side comparison between all of the tenderers, including your PT as well, to do the comparison. And if you go into the rates, the bills or elements, we can see it also indicate which rates is priced higher or lower. So this is up to the consultant's requirement or settings, okay? And if you go over here and we scroll down, we can see there's a bar chart and there's also a line chart as well as a pie chart for you to really uh, visually understand what is the uh, cost uh, 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 cost is split into in terms of the, each of these tenderers. And if you to export the file, we can also click on export. Mm. And with that, we already complete the whole process. Okay, But I want to touch on one last final thing, which is the collaboration when doing BQ. So traditionally, most of us are working in silo. I believe uh, because back then uh, when I'm doing BQs, so the BU coordinator will split their file and split the works. So for example, takeoff A will be doing the structural works, takeoff B will be doing the finishes, and then another two percent will be doing the BQ side of things. So once everyone is done, then only the BQ coordinator takes everyone files and combine it as one. So there's no issue with that, just that it's not collaborated enough and it also can lead to a few things. Number one will be bad file management since there are too many files created, as well as no effective com com communication between the team members. You do your own thing and I do my own thing. So in terms of quality of works, it may drop because it is not standardized properly. But with TBQC, it is different. Instead, everyone doing their own files, everyone is actually working towards one single file. So those that are doing the quantity taking off, after they are doing it in TAS, the quantities, they can actually link it into TBQ. And for those that are doing the description, the pricing, and etc., they will also be using the same BQ files as well. And what about the upper management level? Similarly as well, you need to refer back to the same BQ files and you can trace back the quantities easily with the functions that I've shown you just now, you know, from the quantities, whether it's in TAS or Excel, and then go back to the models, reversely check whether it is drawn properly. So everything is like one simple link and it connects everything. And that's what makes us different. So by now, I believe that you're pretty much aware with the potential that QB costs can offer. So I'll just briefly state its core benefit first. So with QB costs, you're able to improve the working efficiency up to 60 to 70%. And with their high tech capacity and reputation, it increases your chance to secure more tenders as well because you can produce the same work with uh, less time and even lesser resources actually. And with QBCOS, it is also a professional internal collaboration management platform, which leads to a higher quality works and working environment. 
And lastly, as the world's largest BeamQS customer base, which is, uh, that's Gloden, by the way, it is easier for you to communicate if you face any problems with it. And to put it into data, this is the working efficiency comparison done to a few of our clients around the world between the manual method as well as the cubic cost solution. So with cubic cost, the efficiency in terms of day is actually about four times faster than the manual method. And to give you some project testimony example, this one of the clients in Malaysia that completed this office tower project. So you can see the time taken for measurement as well as the QS involved. And bear in mind, this is a three block, 23 stories office tower. And the time for completed measurement is only a week with only three QS. If you're doing a traditional method, you may take longer, you know, up to two weeks or three weeks with more QS involved. So with this efficiency, you're able to get more projects, which in turn, more revenue. This is another one as well in Malaysia, a retail shopping mall. And this kind of shows you the potential of QB cost. So we're about to come to the end of the presentation, but allow me to summarize uh, today's meeting. So as mentioned, the concept of 5D Beam, like what Hong Zheng has presented, is all about digitalization, uh, connection, as well as collaboration. So with the functions from TAS that was presented earlier, as well as the TBQC functions that we have gone through together just now, the aim and the direction is to always achieve digitalization because we know that it will be the future. And if you are haven't understand this, we are glad that you're here because the fact that you're staying here today to the end of the meeting, which is right now, it means that you are putting your foot one step closer into the future of construction industry. And with that, Thank you so much for taking your time to join us. And this marks the end of my presentation. So you can see there's a QR code. If you, we appreciate if you could fill out the feedback form. And we shall now proceed to the Q&A session. Okay. So we'll just proceed to our Q&A session right now. Actually, I can see a lot of questions being asked in the chat box. And for those that would like to ask the questions using your mic, feel free to do so. Just raise your hand and we'll just answer your questions, you know, speak speak in uh, speak speak through this webinar you know it's better to know who i'll be talking to as well okay okay so allow me to just scroll back and just see some questions because earlier there's some few questions uh, uh, speak? uh yes sure you can speak yes okay uh, what's your question uh, Tal Fogel, uh, Vice President from the Epstein Company, uh, Project Manager's uh, Company. We would like, uh, I would like to know what is uh, the possibility to do a, a quantity assurance uh, in order to see that all the elements and uh, the cost uh, management are uh, taken into the bill of quantity. If there is a uh, method of, of procedure, uh, procedure in your uh, software for, for such a thing that we didn't uh, miss uh, elements or uh, part of uh, something in the uh, building. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, actually, because your voice is a bit, it's not clear enough. Maybe do you want to try typing in the question because... Uh, now you hear me? Yes, okay. I think now it's quite okay. clearer. I would like to know Mm. If there is option to make a quality assurance for the quantity, that all the quantities of uh, all the elements that uh, we need to take into the account of the uh, cost uh, of the cost is uh, taking is, uh, in the in the bill of quantity that we can uh, make uh, something that. Uh, uh, that uh, we, we that, that something in the in, during the process that uh, we didn't uh, miss any of the elements. Okay. In the count. I I I think I understand your question, Tao. Okay. Okay. So I think your main concern is about the accuracy as well as the quality of the whole process from the quantity taking off to the BQ, which is in terms of the elements and the breakdown of each item, right? So when it comes to the modeling side of things, which is TAS. So we're not going to speak about the model first, but we're going to speak about the measurement rules and settings first. So inside TAS, we can actually adjust the measurement rules based on your own requirements. 
So I understand that, you know, certain region, they may have different calculation method. For example, uh, some people, when it comes to calculating the, um, the, the wall finishes, some allows maybe 150 mm above ceiling, some maybe allow 50 mm. So you can actually do this kind of settings. And when it comes to the modeling thing, you can actually ask, you can actually get us to help you check the model. So we, from Cubicost Gordon, we can actually help you check the model as long that your project is not, uh, as long as you're okay with it. Because certain clients are very uh, particular about their own project being shared to other people. So we are able to check your project. And when it comes to the BQ side of things, with its description and rates and all that, it really much depends on the information that you are importing into the software. So for example, the description. So in TBQC, we have tried, we have all these checking BQ function, you know, whether is it missed out or what. And there's also a spelling check, you know, in case you type typo in your description. So we can also be able to do that in the software itself. And I hope that answers your question, right? Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, now I got one question. Okay, sorry. Uh, do feel free to scan the QR code and you know maybe refer to the chat box and fill out the feedback form. Okay, there's one question from Uma. Can we calculate steel quantity or we can prepare bar bending schedule? Okay, uh, as mentioned before, there's uh, another software called TRB. Unfortunately, due to time constraint and due to the event itself, we only be demonstrating TAS as well as TBQC. However, when it comes to the reinforcement bar, TRB is capable in doing it. As well as showing the video earlier, uh, video yeah. earlier on TRB, we can actually do that as well. However, if let's say you want to do the reinforcement bar without the TRB, you can actually do it in TAS. So remember inside the project settings, there are the uh, steel ratio. So you can actually input that but the quantities of the reinforced bar may not be accurate because it's based on poundage only, okay? So I hope that answers your questions, Uma. Another question is from Soprav. May you show the modeling show the for model. arc? Example, external wall finishes. Um, sorry. Okay, may you show the modeling for arc example external wall finishes? So, uh, fortunately, there's the software here, but when it comes to doing arc shape elements or external wall finishes, like what Hong Seng has presented earlier, you can actually draw the external wall finishes or even categorize it properly based on the actual work itself. So, when it comes to arc, depending on uh, the shape of the arc, like for example, the beam, you can do the arc shape beam for the walls or lintel as well, you can do arc shape as well, depending on the nature of the work. So I hope that answers your questions. Okay, we got another questions from, from Sean. Can you please show us how you will carry out a floor area measurement? So to do a floor area measurement, uh, maybe I can share. Uh, yeah, you can share. Question, right? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think Hong Sing will take over from here. Yeah, all right. So first of all, let me share the screen. So from here. Okay, you guys can see my screen, right? Yes. So right now, if we're going to talk about the floor area measurement. So from here, actually, you can see at the others, we got you here, the floor area. I'm going to expand it up. Floor area. So from the floor area, just select it. Uh, perhaps okay let's say i'm going to choose here this then i'm going to from the, here right so as like as i highlighted so from here eventually we can just see let's say we want to view the expression but before we do that right actually okay actually we before after we've done all the like all the highlights and so on, we need to calculate it, okay? So I'm just gonna calculate all of it, okay? So after that, just gonna click here. I'm gonna use the view expression here, right here. You can see the area, right? The quantity, the unit. Then after that, if let's say, let's say we're gonna view that quantity, right? To summarize. Yes, we can see that here, your area, your curve, and your original area. 
as there's no deduction or anything. So your area and your origin area will be the same. So I think that uh, answer your question. And right now, I think I will pass back to pass back to Hongwei. Is Hongwei okay? Yes, definitely. No worries. Oh, okay. right. uh, this is Sean. Can you hear me? I, I just okay. Want, uh, we can hear. Uh, can hear you. Other questions. Um. Yeah. I mean, for the area, what what we need to do usually is when we get a, a project, whether it's you know from consultant being a contractor or working consultant, you know, doing some uh, high level cost planning um, exercises, we need to generate um, what we call the gross flow area schedule. Um, so, so, so that would involve basically taking, you know, briefly everything inside the external walls, uh, you know, loosely speaking in terms of the definition. Um, and then if we have like multi-story uh, building, how, how does it work? Is this just a case of extrapolating what, what you've just done there for, for, the, for the kitchen? Okay, for this one. Okay, okay. uh, I'll, I'll, let me to explain. Okay, yeah, allow me to answer. Okay, I believe that when it comes to the cost planning side of things, which is like you mentioned, the GFA. So usually, when doing cost plan, you need that to calculate the uh, cost per square foot, etc. So, like what Hong Xing has shown you just now, you have the draw function that can actually just uh briefly draw everything onto the two D drawing itself. So you can just import it and just draw everything out. And that quantity itself can actually be the duplicate or copy to all of the floors, assuming that it is the same, same typical floor design. Lah. If it's different, then you have to draw it manually as well. But the drawing, the drawing function itself, it's much convenient as compared to you uh, trying to do it uh, on a hard copy drawing. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did that answer your okay. question, Sean? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank okay. You. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Because I think it's a bit, it's a bit chaotic. You know, everyone's Hello? asking questions. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Is this Swaraj? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Swaraj here from uh, okay. India. All right. Actually, yes. we are using this uh, TIS software for the you know quantity take up for uh, architectural and structural quantities. Okay. But uh, when it comes to this uh, drop panels, you no, know, when in commercial uh, projects and drop panels. Uh, drop panels. Okay. Yeah, uh, for the draw panels, uh, we are not able to, you know, uh, auto auto generate the uh, um, the drop panel stuff thing. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Because and ir irregular the shaped uh, draw panels too. Uh, we have to go for this uh, slab, and we have to, you know, uh, give the depth as uh, uh, separately in slab. We need to generate that one. Uh, that uh, auto recognition will not happen for the draw panels. How can we do that one? Okay, uh, uh, so I'm. For that question, because it's too technical and some of some of our participants over here may not be able to understand, maybe uh, you can actually email to our uh, email to really further solve your queries on the drop panel because we want oh. to have everyone to understand a little bit brief about our software because the question that you ask is uh, auto identify the drop panel. So when it comes to auto mm -hmm. identify the functions, it really depends on the your information of the drawings. So if let's say your mm -hmm. drawing information is not sufficient and it's very little, it's actually very hard to use the auto add function. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So maybe you can email to this uh, bd at global.gloden.com and actually mm -hmm. tell us more about the issue. So that way we can further uh, explain to you better. Yes. Is that okay, Saraj? Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, Saraj. And also thank aside you, you. from, okay. Also, also, for those that stay to end, remember that we're giving the trial license to all of you that is present over here. We can actually give you the trial license later on. Hello? And all of these chatbot questions, because the recorded live meeting will be sent to all of you as well for your reference as well. So we'll do that as well. So allow me to just take in a few more questions, you know, because Hello? due to time constraint. Uh, the, yes, may I know who is this speaking? Hello, may I know who is this speaking? Uh, I think it's from Bara. Is it? Hello, can you hear? Uh, yes, can, can you hear me? Sir? Yeah, by in Q we are using cubic cost. I'm from India. Like while doing in finishes quantities, especially the beams which you can see in kitchens, the doors will be not available. So the openings will be there, the wall openings. When it comes for the beams, the finishes will not be applied. We need to apply manually the sides and the bottom. 
uh anyway the openings are provided that the beams finishes uh baraf because i believe this is based on your own project drawings right so no 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 as, so uh, you can imagine the places like in kitchen there's an open place open door there's no door or anything which so quite mentioned so once we place the room when we create the room as a kitchen and we apply the finishes quantities it going to apply for the walls but where it whereas it comes the beams which is not connected with any walls or anything it doesn't apply the finishes quantities i can just show you the issue also we faced it lot of times and we after coming to another we just place it manually not uh, baraf baraf i understand your i understand your concern about this maybe we can have a separate session on this because uh we want to try to answer as many questions on the brief surface of the software itself because the questions they raise i think you can actually email to the uh, bd@global.com and we will get back to you maybe tomorrow if you if you like to on that issue would that be okay because yeah. you are because you're mentioning on the room function on the finishes right yeah yes yes i understand that so maybe to i will I'll, i'll actually send you an email later just to further mm-hmm. clarify on this matter would that be okay oh uh, yes okay yeah. thank you so much baraf i just want to try to answer as many questions as possible actually okay so moving back to the Okay, another one. We have Morgan. Okay, Morgan. Hi, Morgan. Yeah, Morgan is one of our good afternoon. Old time clients good actually. Afternoon. Okay. And good afternoon, everybody. I have a question here. I would like to know how can builders merchants participate in pricing TBQ uh, D in e tender. For example, if if a consultant prepares or publishes a document and generates a, a, a TBQ Uh, uh, D version for contra- contractors to price. Mm. How then can contractors request RFQ or request for quotations from builders, merchants, or building material suppliers? How can they participate in pricing the TBQ D version in e tender? Is there another application, or it is via Excel? Uh. Okay, and allow me to just show me the software itself. So you are mentioning on the build up rate, right? For pricing for labels, uh, pricing it separately aside from using TBQC, right? That's another question. In e tender, <coughs> excuse me. In e tender, I noted that when contractors price in e tender, they have an option only to submit or to price one whole rate, whereas Uh, when when using a TBQ uh, platform, there's mm. an option to break down the rate into labor material yes, and plant. Yes, I understand. Or a markup, yeah. But that is not the case with eTender. So you're Am saying that the online is not able to do the pricing for the build-up, right? In detail, yes. You cannot do in detail. Yes, uh, rate uh, that, will that will be the that will be the downside of it because um, the TBQC functions when it comes to the resource library as well as the build up in rate is only limited to the TBQC software itself. So if for contractors that does not have the software, the best they can do is actually just to price in based on the online, through the online website actually. So when it comes to doing the um, build up unit rate, the breakdown of all the rates, they will have to use TBQC. If they do not have it, maybe they have to base on their own master cost data files, which is maybe in their own format, which is Excel, Or maybe hard copy, yes. That goes on to my second question then. So it means when building material suppliers uh, prepare their own quotations of, say, costs of materials, different types of materials, mm. contractors still have to rely on on Excel or PDF or email or whatever fax from you know to build up uh, rates in e tender or or, or or TBQ still. Yes, they still need. Uh, ex, uh, uh, but is there a direct way of engaging building material suppliers also to price into TBQ? The okay, the same uh, I understand. Maybe maybe you mean that contractor do not need to do that and let the building materials or the subcon to do the direct pricing into TBQC, right? To of materials for yeah. materials, yes. What for happens the, for the breakdown rates? Contractors have to price, right? Hmm. But when they price, it is they build up the rate but they build up the rate on the basis of quotations from builders merchants or building material suppliers how can building material suppliers participate in tbq as well you know 
similarly is actually for building, yeah, yes. excel or email for building supplier same thing as well because you have to understand because they have to do their own rates and quotation and give it to the contractors right so if the, the building supplier do not have tbqc it will be very hard for you to use this kind of functions so if you say to participate without the software uh it cannot be done the best possible solution is to ask the building suppliers to give you all of the breakdown rates, maybe the label materials in a proper Excel format, which you can directly identify into TBQC from the contractor point of view. Oh, Excel, yeah. Excel is the way. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, I hope that answers your question, right, Morgan? Yes, thank okay. you. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm just gonna take in probably another two to three more questions. Okay, let's look at the chat box. Ting Ta John got a question. Yeah, good, good day. All right. Can TBQ export BQ to Excel? If so, does it maintain format and formulas for pricing in Excel? Uh if you, when you export the TBQ, okay. When you comes to exporting the files, you can export to Excel then all of the quantities will actually be shown but there will be no formula linking to it because you can actually directly print out the files because if you have tbqc there's actually no need for excel to do your bqs anymore except you want it to uh, keep it as a soft copy excel and just store for your safekeeping so when you export the files the quantities the description the units all will be there and you can directly print out as well and all the formats will be done just that uh, for example if let's say the quantity is five and the rate is ten and the net amount, if it's an Excel, it will show you the numbers of the rows and columns that times five multiplied by 10, right? So when you export it, the formulas will not be shown, but the quantities will be there. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I think we go one question from Osama. So Osama, you can... Uh, uh, hello, everybody. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask about uh, the electrical and the mechanical equipment uh, uh, for the modeling and VOQ. Uh, if it valid in uh, this software? Uh, sorry, come again. The the the. Uh, okay, I I saw how to model uh, the architecture and the structural elements. What about the mechanical and the electrical elements? The mechanical and electrical, yes, we have another software yeah. called TMEC, which is specifically targeted for the mechanical and electrical uh, plumbing and even fire protection works actually. So that is another separate software. So it's a, uh, it's a separate you, software. It's separate uh. software. Yeah, because you have to understand, we cannot you know combine all of the functions into one single software because that way it will make the software extremely large and maybe the requirements to run a software will be extremely high. So that's why we want to split it. But at the same time, is actually interoperate within each other. Yeah, so, so actually for all of the participants in here, we will actually not only send out the live recorder mean to you, the trial license to you on how to download the software and what is the steps to activate the license. We will also be sending the online training platform. So that way you can access to our Gloden online training platform to our TAS. You can actually go through the courses and learn in details on how each of the functions uh, use so we, we will actually send it to you uh, later on so no okay, worries thank that. you thank yes, you no, very much yes no problem on that no problem on that okay thank yes you. okay we have another question uh, I'm just going to take in uh, is this Imali uh, hello uh, hi hi, hi. Uh, can we use the micro base uh, BOQ in TBQ micro base you mean micro, micro software micro base no, no, macro based Excel format. Yes, Excel format. Yes, we can actually use the Excel format and import into TBQ. I mean, a macro based one. Uh, Met metro based, do you mean? Uh, uh, yes, uh, using Excel macro, uh, uh, we build up the uh, BOQ format. Uh, so, can we use it in BOQ, uh, in TBQ? Uh, um, I'm sorry, Mari, but the the Excel, the the format that you're currently using is what format, yeah? Uh, yeah, uh, not a normal uh, Excel view of you. Uh, uh, not a normal Excel view. Uh, uh, they're developing um, using macro in Excel. So it's still under Excel, right? Or is it not yeah, under Excel? Yeah, under Excel, yeah. It's still under Excel. 
Uh, okay, because this is the first time I'm, I'm hearing this actually. So perhaps mm -hmm. we we need to try it out first because if it's under Excel, I believe it should be able to import the files into it. Yes. Okay, okay. thank you. Yes, no problem. Okay, uh, I'm just going to take in probably... There's a lot of questions from the chat box. I'm just going to try to answer as much as possible. So the trial license will be, T, will be TS only. Yes, is it for TS only? It will be TS only. Okay, there's one interesting question from uh, Randy. How accurate is the cubic cost for a parametric model? For example, the IFC file format or Revit file format. Do all building elements quantify 100%? Now, in TAS, you are able to import Revit files and IFC files and they will actually import the whole building models in. And you can actually immediately quantify the whole models and we give you the quantification, quantifications uh, based on the measurement rules as well as the measurements, the things that you set. In terms of the accuracy, we dare not to say 100% accurate because you have to understand doing a modeling in Revit and doing a model in Cubicos is different due to the, due to the, the system as well as due to the internal, uh, what do you call that? the modeling software so it's different so you may need to do some adjustment inside cubicos in order to make sure that everything is correct uh, i think mr dinusha I... maybe we can take one more question from uh, mr dinusha yes Okay, sure. Okay, we'll just take one last question and hi. And, yes, Hello? hi, Mr. Dinusha, right? Hi. Yeah, hi. Um, hi. Thank you for it's a wonderful session, and we learned a lot of about this new technology kind. Yeah. Okay. And I have one question: like uh, using the Cubicost uh, software available, and can we generate a financial report like uh, and uh, cost value reconciliation kind of assessment? Uh, cost value reconciliation. Okay. So when you when it comes financial report now, uh, my understanding of financial report is very very detailed. So it goes Monday, and it's split into yeah, like few I projects. Mean, analyzing the BOQ and what, for example, yes. the BOQ, uh, the progress report kind of thing. What is the yes, actual the work report. then? And, yeah. Uh, yeah, against the BOQ item and, kind of then. Yeah, I believe, the I believe there's yeah. more towards the post contract stage already, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay, so in post contract stage, when it comes to the financial analysis, if you want to be extremely details about it, in TAS, there's actually a function called segmentation. So every uh -huh. month, you'll be doing progress payment, right? Progress works. Yeah. So yeah. in TAS, we have this segmentation function that you can identify which area has been completed. So mm -hmm. that way, the quantities will be generated based on the areas of completion and it will split oh, okay. out properly. And that's for the quantity side of things. And for the BQ, you can, because the BQ quantities is linked directly to your models. Mm -hmm. So that way, it will be a same connection where you'll be able to see the changes in the quantities as well. Okay. So not yes. the whole report, but we can get support yes. from the Yes, software. some data, but not the whole report. If you're talking yeah. about the whole report, including, you know, like even VOs or maybe even certain much details like yeah. uh, changes. Yeah, I mean, of course. Financial yeah. report because be financial, financial report yeah. is a very, very detailed report that is sent to the client. In terms of the quantity perspective. Yeah. Yes. Quantity, quantity perspective, yeah. you will be able yeah. to do it through TAS as well yeah. as TBQ. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. I hope that answers your questions. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, final question. Oh, okay, sure, Morgan. One well, last funny question, no problem. Yes, uh, on TBQ final summary, okay. uh, building elements, there's always a total at the bottom, which uh, shows the total cost of uh, building elements. But in addition to that, can I have a tailor-made summary? For example, if I have a total of the building elements, different types of building elements, can I add, say, for example, contingency, and then get a subtotal. And then in addition to that uh, subtotal, add VET, and then add the subtotal and the amount of VET as my final summary. Is it possible to have a, something like that, the tailor-made summary in one page in TVQ as yes, the final? Yes, you can. 
yes, you can do that. Because I believe each BQ, you know, you have the preliminaries. Then you have your bills, for example, your tower and maybe podium. And you also have your provisional sum, prime cost sum, and also your contingency, like what you mentioned. So in TBQ, you can actually create each of these bills separately. And inside the bill, we can do the details element, you know, heading, you can put contingency. And when it comes to doing the report management side of things, which is the printing, the BQ, you can actually uh, change the paging. So in your summary, you want it to show all of it, you can do it. Yes. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. So with that, I would like to say thank you to everyone. To those questions that have yet to be answered, I will try to email back to you on the possible answers to you through email later on. I will go through each of the questions later on and I'll get back to you all on the replies, okay? Together with the recorded meeting, the trial license on the download, how to download, how to use, how to activate, as well as the online training platform that I mentioned just now, okay? So we have all of it. So I hope you guys have also filled up the feedback form as shown in the slides, you know, just scan the QR code and just, you know, fill the feedback form. Yes. And if let's say you're interested in other software, for example, TMEC, any to require any uh, demonstration from us, our team, you can just fill out the feedback form and we'll get back to you later on. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much. Uh, Hong Seng, do you have anything you want to add on to our lovely participants? All right, so before we end, actually, I see a lot of uh, a very wonderful question, actually. It's very interesting. So I hope you guys to fill in the feedback form so that we can get back to you as much as poss possible. As for those that uh, ask the question, we will follow up with your, you guys. And we will, like, for some of you, I think that you guys talk about, like, those, like, mechanical and also some, like, maybe, like, electrical and also the steel bar. So eventually we will get back to you. We will follow up with you. So like my partner Hong Wei said that he will, uh, he will actually will giving email out all those like the trial license and so on the OTP the online training. So from that eventually we will uh follow up with you guys closely. All right. So mm -hmm. from my place I think that's all. And also I want to thank all of you guys for this wonderful evening that you guys can join us. You guys really uh, very uh, anticipate that you guys has raised up a lot of questions, giving us a lot of feedbacks. Actually, we are very grateful for that. Appreciate it. So we will, uh, we will follow up with you guys closely, truly. That's all from my part. Get back to you, Hongwei. Okay. I think for my part, it's about that. I also summarize what I need to summarize. So I still think I'll just say thank you everyone once again for joining, taking our time out. And we hope to see you another next event that will be house uh that'll be hosting probably uh early next month or next month yes okay so thank you so much everyone so to those that is based on our time zone is mornings i'll just say a good morning to you all and if it's night i'll say good evening okay we will send to you in good the evening good evening thank you yes no problem thank you so much from thank you all thank you all Waiting for the next you. session. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Raman. All right. Thank you, everyone. Yes. We will actually send it to you uh, later on or either by tomorrow. Yes, because we need to process the, the recording meeting as well. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Goodbye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You Goodbye. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.